Hey guys, welcome back to another BTG video. Experimenting here with something new. As you can tell by this lovely table area here, this is my paint desk. And I am by no stretch of the imagination a master painter or anything like that. But I thought it might be kind of cool to share some of the stuff that I'm working on. Some of it's for Coastal Con. Some of it's just because I like to paint models and collect models. I'm sure you all can appreciate and understand the whole collecting models thing. So let's just jump in. I'm going to try to keep this video a little bit short. I'm not going to go too long. Because uh, I know I get bored watching videos pretty quickly. <clears throat> personally. But I'm going to show you a few things that I'm working on right now. All the stuff I'm working on right now is for Coastal Con. Um... But let me just jump in and show you. I got one model finish I want to show you. Just recently finished. So this dude here. Let me get that to focus. How about, boom, there we go. Turn the light on. So this dude, I like how he turned out. He is for free blades. Be taking him. We might even be having a free blades tournament, which would be kind of cool. And then this is a work in progress right here. So this is a new model from the two-player starter set from Deep Wars. She's a pretty cool model. A lot of, lot of little details on there. Some of the Antimatter Games models are some of my favorite ones. Mo some of the best details. So this guy, this is another Freeblade guy. I'm going to be finishing him up tonight. Probably in this video, that's probably mostly what I'm going to be working on is this guy right here he's pretty cool he's an unproven from the Erdogar clan if I can get him to focus my focus needs more focus I guess anyway we'll check him out and then I got a couple other guys I'm working on here so we got a Reaper Viking obviously a work in progress because he's more primer than anything else uh, he'll be he's for Ragnarok and my my Erdogar are gonna be they're gonna serve double duty as Erdogar in Free Blades and Vikings in Ragnarok. So this guy he he's pretty cool too. This is uh, Wolf Carl from Free Blades. Again he's gonna he's gonna be showing up in my Ragnarok Warband as well. And then some really cool minis. Not that those other ones weren't, because they were. This is Agatha from the Scions of the Saiyan for Twisted, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite games right up there with Deep Wars and uh, Wild West Exodus and The Drowned Earth. A few of my real go-to favorites. And then this is another one for Twisted for the Dickensians. This is an Urken Shooter. And if you haven't read the fluff about the Dickensians and the Urken, I highly encourage you to go download the rule book from DementedGames.com. Uh, the book is free, so no reason not to. So let's jump back in. I'm going to jump back into this guy here. I got a lot of the colors laid down that I want, basically. Just put a wash on him last night and... Got a little bit of detail to finish up. And then we'll see what happens. I haven't really decided exactly what I want them to look like. I'm kind of going for a generic barbarian just because I'm going to have them serving double duty in other games. So for me, that's kind of a, that's kind of a big deal for me. So don't hate me. Yes, that is regular old-fashioned craft paint. And I do use it quite frequently. But um, I don't really have any issues with using craft paint. I know some people don't like to. Spend a bunch of money on your minis and then, oh, spend, then, then using 50 cent paint on them. But most of the time, obviously I'm not right now, but most of the time when I use any of my craft paints what I'll do is uh, I'll just mix it with a glaze medium thin it down a little bit and 
it, it works fine for me. I mean, I'm not winning any awards anyway. So, I'm just trying to get my minis painted because I like the overall theme. I got to get a bigger brush. I like the overall look. I'm, I'm all about getting into the... Uh, getting lost in the game. That's why I build the tables the way I do. Or the intricate tables. Is so that I can kind of get lost in the game. Immersion. That's the word I was digging for that I couldn't come up with. The immersion. And even if my minis don't look the best. If they're painted. They still look better than primered or not even primered models. So. It's okay with me. It's okay with me. So I thought about doing this like on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. And honestly, the reason I'm not doing it on uh, live on YouTube is because when I checked it out, I have never done anything live on YouTube, but when I looked at it, it wanted an authentication code and it was going to send a message to my phone. And um, I don't have my phone with me, so <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go upstairs and get it because I'm painting and all the kids are in bed so it's quiet in the house and when you have four children quiet in the house is something few and far between actually I'll throw DM Jim under the bus on this one well not really under the bus I was watching a, a Facebook live he was doing the other day building some rip monuments some rest in peace monuments for his players for a game and he was saying how his boys had gone back to school and the house was quiet I said well, you, you, it's too quiet I, I got some you can borrow anytime you want because <laughs> my kids are all homeschooled so they don't go to school and make noise they stay here and make noise but that's okay because they're awesome so I don't care <laughs> yeah this is a really cool model I, he's He's kind of a, a nobody, I think. I, I don't really know the Freeblade rules that well, but he's kind of a nobody as far as I understand in the rules. He's like a line trooper guy and in Freeblades. But for me, he's going to be just a little bit more significant in my Ragnarok Warband because I think he's so cool looking. So it's one of my... Uh, it's not really a secret, but... I have an endless supply of paint palettes <clears throat> in the form of bases because I mount all my guys on clear acrylic bases. So I have all these bases just piling up from all my minis. So I use them for paint palettes. Works well. I'm probably not going to work for a whole lot of people just because not a oh, Basing on acrylic, clear acrylic is becoming more popular, but it's still not. Most people are just still using their regular bases. And it's funny, too, because I love building scenic bases, but I don't mount my guys on scenic bases. I used to do a whole bunch of bases for guys in our uh, game group. I say a whole bunch of bases, but it was really for like one or two guys. But it was for 40k, so it was a lot of bases. Just because it was for 40k. But I don't play 40k anymore. I still love the fluff. I love the 40k universe. But I just... Truthfully, I just enjoy a game that I can play a little bit more quickly. <clears throat> I kind of fell in love with the that skirmish setting it's just so nice to knock out a game or even to be able to play two or three games when you get together just because they run so much more quickly so I'm just doing a little bit of highlighting on this I put like I said I put a wash on this last night just hitting a few of the raised areas just to bring it back to a little bit of a white-ish, bone-ish kind of color. There is absolutely no rhyme or reason to my painting. 
Although, I tell you, uh, the thing that I learned the most about painting was from Eric Luchard, who's the dude that created Deep Wars. Because he has a book, too, about painting the models for Deep Wars. And they're really unique models because a lot of them are, that well... A vast majority of them are un underwater things, fish, monsters, things like that. So the color patterns and the combinations are just, they're, they're kind of crazy what you can do. The opportunities that you have to just kind of go wild with whatever you want color scheme wise. I might go grab one in a, one of my fish and show you kind of what I'm talking about eyeballs nobody likes well somebody probably likes eyeballs I don't like painting eyeballs but I have to do it it's like a requirement now because once you start you can't have one model in your army with eyeballs or I can't have one model in my army with eyeballs and then the rest of them without. So, but to each their own. As long as they're painted, I always tell my kids when they're painting the same thing. Nobody has to like your models but you. And that's probably the only painting advice I will ever give to anybody. <laughs> because, like I said, I'm no pro by any means. I just like to paint. It's relaxing to me. Just sit around and stick my little tiny paintbrush into pots of paint. Yeah. Alright, so... <coughs> I almost feel like I just got too many shades of brown on this dude. But I got a little bit of red right in there you probably can't see it little tiny spot I missed eh whatever like I said I ain't trying to win a contest so let's get some metals I don't like non-metallic metal number one I can't do it number two I don't really care for the way it looks but again that's just personal preference uh, there's Daz who works for War Cradle, who also makes amazing models, that bought one of my favorite games, Wild West Exodus. He is hes a really, really awesome painter. And he does amazing non-metallic metallics. I just don't care for him, personally. But, like I said, that's just a, a preference thing. Anyway, what I was saying earlier about the, like the YouTube Live is I was trying to decide if I wanted to do this like on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. And I just wasn't sure. So if anybody actually watches this video and has any insight as to what they think might be better... I would love to hear what you have to say. Unless, of course, what you have to say is, Hey, Max, stop painting and talking because nobody wants to hear it. In which case, you know, that's that's not cool. Go home and cry in my paint. Not really. Don't. That's not going to happen. So, I have like some super favorite colors, and this is one of them, the Army Painter Gun Metal. I miss the old bolt gun metal. Not the, not the newer GW stuff, but the old bolt gun metal that came in, um, it was in one of these GW bottles. 
Yes, I know I just dated myself on my painting, right? So I should be <laughs> I should be a whole lot better based on how old my paints are. But I'm not, so that's okay. We're okay with that. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe I should maybe I should do this as a live feed. That can be hard sometimes though, because it'd always be late at night. Because I got a bunch of kids, and uh, they got to be in bed, because my children have one volume, and it's a very loud one. So recording. Ah, oh, look at that! I messed up his eyeball. And it's a very loud one, so recording anything is next to impossible. Like sometimes when I practice with my band, I can hear my children over the band. <laughs> but that's okay. I still like them. Even though they're super loud. They come by it honestly. But anyway, yeah, I mean, if, if you guys think that this might be better via a live feed, which would be kind of cool to be able to chat with people. I know it's really cool when I watch, like, DM Jim do his. I try to catch his, but it's kind of hard sometimes. But I try to catch his live feeds on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock because i got to take my son to his job anyway. So, I can kind of, while he's doing his job, his work, I can chill out and watch. I just have to time it all right. But I like the, I like being able to, to talk actively to, I mean, you're typing, I'm typing when I talk to him. And he just talks back, but you guys probably know that from the all the live stuff. But anyway, that's pretty cool. So one of the things I'm really excited about is since I got the light kits, we're gonna shoot bat reps now. And if I'm not mistaken, if everything goes according to plan, fingers crossed on that one. If everything goes according to plan, we are going to shoot a bat rep for Twisted. Saturday, yeah, Saturday night is the plan. Uh, we'll do our custom scenario. And that should be pretty cool. It may be a complete and utter train wreck, but I'm willing to take that chance. Nah, it should, it should be good. No matter what, I think it'll come out all right. I think it's going to take a lot of tweaking of the cameras and stuff, but... So anyway, here's where we are so far. I mean, he's almost... He was almost done anyway. But, uh... I think he's coming out pretty good. I like him. Come out pretty good. Pretty good. Not too shabby. Good enough from the for the table anyway, because you know you're not gonna be seeing him right here anyway. You can be seeing him way over here, like oh yeah, he looks awesome over there. No, no, don't bring him any closer. <laughs> too close, too close. But I'm um, actually uh, I hadn't thought about it, but the Erdogar and my Vikings would cross over really nicely for. Frostgrave too. I haven't played a bunch of Frostgrave, but I do like it. I, I love the um, the campaign games that do that because it, it always reminds me of the first edition of Necromunda, and I love that man. Me and my group in California when I lived out there, while well, stationed out there, man. We played that thing all the time. It was just so much fun. Uh, and then... Then I moved. And that kind of stuff fell off. 
who I wasn't really playing anymore. It never seemed like really anything scratched that that same Necromunda itch. And now, shoot, now there's games coming out your ears that are doing that. And I think that's awesome. The only not awesome part about it is I feel like I gotta play them all. And since I have to play them all, I gotta buy all the minis. And then I gotta paint all the minis. And I, I, I won't show you my shelf of shame because I'm sure that if anybody's watching this and taking the time to watch a painting video of a guy who's not that good of a painter, that you probably also have a gigantic shelf full of unpainted minis. As do I. Maybe even possibly more than one gigantic shelf filled with unpainted minis. Possibly. Maybe. Okay. Definitely. We all do. We all know. That's why there's like 500 memes out there about getting your miniatures painted. All in all, though, I'm, I'm pretty good. I have, uh, I counted them. God, I, was, I counted my painted minis about a year ago before we moved into our new house. So it was about a year ago I counted them. And I had, I want to say it was about 1,100 painted. Uh, so that wasn't too bad was not very close to how many I had unpainted, but <laughs> I should have just stopped at counting the painted ones. Shouldn't have kept counting. It was horrible. I'm new to this whole painting in front of people thing, so I'm sure I'm pulling it out of the camera. I should probably put some tape on my desk and be like, hey, stay in here. Let's see. So speaking of the campaign games, like Frostgrave and Ragnarok is one, and then This Is Not a Test. I, I like This Is Not a Test. I just don't have anybody to play it with. I got the, I've got the rule book, uh, and it's a super cool rule set. I really like it. But like I said, I don't have anybody to play with. So I've got a, I've got so many models that I've got a bunch of stuff that fits it. I just, like I said, I haven't played, but little secret for the channel. Let's see if I can get this in here because I'm not set up for it. Oh, there's the name right there, Joseph McGuire, who wrote, this is not a test. This is going to be upside down, but it's okay. Bam! Reality's Edge, Cyberpunk Skirmish Rules. Yeah, I got my book. So, we're going to be doing a review on that. I just read the uh, Basic Mechanics a little while ago when my son was at karate and I was sitting in the parking lot and it's all it's just it's awesome it uses a d10 system which is I love a d10 system I think that's a sweet spot f to use the d10 it's not as random as the um, using a d20 and not as limited, I guess limited would be the word, not quite as limited as a D6 system. And there's not really, I don't think there's really a whole bunch of D8 systems. I know I've played a little bit of the Batman DC Universe game, and I know they use a D8. And, th and that was kind of nice. That was a little bit of a halfway point if you will between that d8 or the d10 and the d6 so that that was pretty nice but i think the d10 is the sweet spot although i gotta say that the d20 system the way that they have the stats in twisted i really like that okay so i'm, I'm gonna pretty much call this dude done I'll probably, except for, well, no, I'm not. i got to do the little rock on the bottom, but i got to let that dry, put a wash on it, and then highlight it up. But other than that, I'm going to pretty much call him done. Good enough for the table. 
because I have so much stuff to get painted for Coastal Con because several of the demos that we're running are terrain and models supplied by me so I gotta get a lot of stuff painted I do have some help though I got a gentleman in the Atlanta area who's who's helping me out so I think I want to do my Urkin next because these guys I'm telling you you have to go read their fluff it's just it's terrifying it's just scary so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of what I have here already in my palette just to use it this color right here this is uh what is it doom bowl doom bowl brown here I see that it's so dark Doom Bowl Brown. It reminds me of a slightly darker vermin fur. Man, that was a good color. That was a, I, I still have a little teeny tiny bit left from the olden days of painting. And I do mean a teeny tiny bit. I've added some medium to my bottle a couple of times just so I can get the last little bit out so I used the contrast paint on this guy's cape I don't know how many of you guys have tried the contrast paint but I, I like it it's pretty good it's not anything new or revolutionary uh, I was after I read Eric's painting guide from Deep Wars after I read that and what he was doing is 90% of what he does was glazes, inks, and washes, which, I mean, that's what, like, all the really good painters do. Anyway, they use a lot of that stuff. As you can see, I'm not using that. But, um, so I was already, I had already started doing a lot of that, and I never called them contrast paints, but that's essentially what they were when you were blending or mixing down your um, inks and making your glazes and washes and everything. So I, I like being able to make your own glazes and washes and inks because then you're not just limited to that small selection of colors that you get in the pre-bottled stuff from... GW or Army Painter, Vallejo, any of those guys. Which, incidentally, I, I got some Army... I got the Army Painter Mega Set about a year ago. And, man, I, I love those paints. I really do. I don't know if I really love the paints or if I am just enamored with the fact that they're in dropper bottles instead of the horrible... GW pots and I like GW paints but when I get them as soon as I get them they go in a dropper bottle I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that do that because that's just <sighs> nope waste all kinds of paint paint dries out but but I love the paint I really do. See, if I was live with you guys, I could ask you guys what color I should do his shirt. I should do this live or something, I think. That's the Doom Bowl Brown. I think that's going to work good. They're really... The guy, the Urkin are really creepy. They're cool, but they're creepy. He's not one of the creepiest ones. It's the ones with the little demented stuffed animals on their backs. They're the ones that are really creepy. super creepy I think I'm going to do his little bag on his head real quick and then I'll figure out what color I want to do his shirt let me 
Mr. Baghead. So, um, we're also thinking about doing a pluck and paint at Coastal Con. Uh, so, you know, just having a, a handful of, well, not a handful, because I'm really hoping we get a nice turnout, big turnout for the con. It seems to be gathering momentum all on its own, which is just wonderful. Uh, gotten so many people coming as far as vendors and games represented. So that's just that's just awesome. It's really cool watching it grow. But um we need to get we would need the minis and I don't I have enough but I don't want to give my minis away I like my minis I want to paint them so so got to figure that out uh, we've had so many different vendors be so generous I, I can't plug them enough uh, as a matter of well actually you know what I'm gonna take the opportunity to do exactly that for the two people that watch this video <laughs> is antimatter games demented games warlord uh who else unipolar games all those guys have been they've willingly donated stuff which i mean we're just we're nothing right now you know what i mean we're a brand new con no We're just, I mean, we, we haven't even had a convention yet. We're still planning everything out. That color might be a little bit too close to the the bag on his head. That's all right. I can highlight it up a little bit lighter. You can see I, I did that. I did the uh, Talarn sand on the bag on his head. I guess that doesn't, I guess that's pretty different. And then I'm going with like a skeleton bone shirt so I guess that doesn't look that doesn't look too close that probably work anyway so those vendors have been so stinking generous I just can't I can't get over how much support we're getting for the convention it's just it's amazing uh, and uh, it's just going to take off. I hope, anyway. We're hoping to turn it into three days for next year. I mean, I'm, I'm a pastor by trade. That's what I do. So, obviously, I believe that it's taken off because I'm doing what God wants me to do. So, you don't have to believe that. Because I do. But the it, it is just for real I, I can't believe how much traction we've gotten I've got right now um, I think nine vendors and I decided to do this just in July is when that's when I created the Facebook group was in July and I didn't create the Facebook group until I was until I said to myself okay here we go let's let's do this because our local convention here GnomeCon uh, it the last one number I think it was number seven I would have to look at my shirt my GnomeCon shirt but it was number seven but right after that they announced that that was it there was no more GnomeCon and I love traveling to conventions. Siege of Augusta is one of my all-time favorites. Mace, Con Carolinas, those are all just awesome conventions I love going to. But, you got to admit, it's, it's kind of nice if you don't have to travel. And I never experienced that, so I'm going to. Because even with Gnome Con, it was an hour away. And I, that's not very far, but Coastal Con is going to be like seven minutes away from my house so I'm okay with that 
I'm okay with that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up in just a minute. I'm going to put this black on his shoes. Talk to you guys for a minute after that while I put a clear coat on, or actually while I finish that rock on that unproven, that other guy I was working on. And then we'll wrap it up because we're right at about 35 minutes and I don't want to bore you guys with painting. Well, maybe I do. That's probably why I'm doing this, because I wanted to bore you guys. Um, yeah, so we'll put the black on there. Don't judge me for my acrylic paint. Don't judge. son just came downstairs and he's trying to be all sneaky and quiet he's 14 though so he he knows that if I'm recording he should probably be quiet my six seven and nine year olds not so much not so much All right. I'll finish him up with a little bit of highlighting clear coat. I'm not going to make y'all sit around and wait for it to dry. Get the paint out of my fingernails. I was doing terrain before I started over here. So I'll show you what we got so far. So my Urkin shooter didn't get a whole lot done on him, but he's coming along nicely. I'll be glad to get all the Urkin done. They're, they're just, these twisted minis are just crazy good. And I said it in a video before, I love a wonderfully sculpted mini. And <clears throat> my top two game companies for sculpting has always been Antimatter Games with Deep Wars and Olmec Games with the Drowned Earth. And I gotta say that Twisted has jumped into that category with it so so that's what we got done for tonight so give me one second I'm gonna grab something to show you I was telling you about the inks and washes and contrast paints and fish Sorry about that. All right, so I'm gonna show you these real quick. These are my dire fish lizards, and these are from Antimatter Games. So these were done almost, almost exclusively with inks, washes, and glazes. And then I did a I did a pearlescent coat on that guy the last coat and then same thing here this is inks washes and glazes and except for the bone white and the black eye that's all that's on here it's just inks washes and glazes over a white clear coat and <clears throat> so that's why I say check out that book uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what it is now, but you can go to antimattergames.com and find that book. So check it out. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. If you watched the video, let me know what you think about should I do this like a live feed or is a regular video cool? What do you guys think would work better? Anyway, let me know in the comments section and give me a like and a subscribe if you want
and we will check you out next time and i think next time is either going to be our bat rep saturday or else psh, talking about reality's edge i might do that sometime tomorrow during the day depending on if i get a chance so until then guys have a good one and we will talk to you later